Alright, it's been a while since I've started thinking about making an ARM Cortex-M tutorial series and finally I've decided I'll give it a try. But before we start writing any code, we need to prepare our development environment. So let's begin! There are plenty of free or not IDs used for developing applications dedicated for microcontrollers with ARM Cortex-M cores. STM32 Cube IDE Renesas E Square Studio, Figure Embedded Studio, Platform IO, and so on and so on. But instead of using one of these and accidentally getting bound to one certain microcontroller's vendor, I would like to propose you a development environment that is free to use for both personal and commercial projects and is capable of editing, compiling, programming, and debugging all ARM Cortex M core based microcontrollers, no matter which vendor you pick. By the end of this video, I would like to show you how to prepare this environment, so let's begin with editing. For editing, you could basically use any text editor capable of writing .h and .c or .cdpp file. Even Notepad++ with basic syntax blurring is not that bad for writing some basic stuff. This however can get a little bit hard when your projects grow to significant sizes with many many files and thousands of lines of code. Then. Something that can support you with com code completion functionality will definitely make your coding more efficient. And that's where Visual Studio Code comes in with its built-in intelligence. Installation is very simple. In your web browser, go to code.visualstudio.com and download the executable file. After downloading, launch the file and let the installer do everything for you. Alright, now that we have our code editor, we need tools to compile the code and get a binary that can be loaded to our file. For this, we're gonna use Windows Subsystem for Linux together with Ubuntu distribution, GNU Make to automate building process, in GNU ARM embedded toolchain that contains imported for us GCC compiler targeting ARM Cortex based devices. To install WSL, we need to start with enabling this feature in Win. For this, type in features and run turn Windows features on or off. Then, you need to scroll down and tick Windows Subsystem for Linux and press OK. Now system will install the feature and we need to restart our uh, our windows. After rebooting the system, WSL is ready to install our first Linux distribution. For this, launch Microsoft Store, search for Ubuntu, Select one and then download it and let the system install. You don't need any uh, signing in, just click the no thanks and then press install. After Ubuntu installation, press launch. All you need to do is type in your username and password. Now our Linux is almost ready, but still we need to update it. Simply type sudo apt-get update. And then we need to upgrade. Mm -hmm. 
and our Linux is ready, next we need to install is GNOME. For this, simply type in sudo apt get install build essential and confirm installation. Make sure make is installed, type in make version. Console should print some information about installed make. Last missing element to compile our code is the compiler itself. To get it, go to ARM developer website and download GCC ARM package for Linux. Move the downloaded package to the directory of your choice. Now hold shift, press right mouse button and click open Linux shell here. This will open Linux terminal in the directory you save the compiler package. Type in tar vfx the name of the package and hit enter to unpack the toolchain. After the process is done, type dot slash gcc dash arm, press tab, slash bin, slash arm, tab, gcc, and press enter. As you can see, the compiler is ready to work. That's it about compiling our code. Now we need to load it to our microcontroller to program. For this, we need drivers for our programming device. In our case, it's Jlinks, so therefore, go to Tucker website and download Jlinks software and documentation pack for Windows. After downloading, run the installator. After installation is on, simply type jflash to find your flashing tool. Fine, now we need last element to ready up our development environment and that is the debugger. Installation of this is again as simple as going to website, downloading executable file and running it in our system. Perfect, now we have everything we need to start developing our application for ARM-based chip. In the next video, we are gonna create and run our very first project application targeted for Cortex-M microcontroller. And that's it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.